Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Gundam News. And normally, I was going to be able to start this week's episode by telling you how Hathaway's Flash was finally released in Japanese cinemas. But, um, I'm sure you've heard how Japan is currently facing a bit of a crisis concerning some human malware, so... It's been delayed. Again. And this time around, they're not actually giving us a date when they are going to be releasing it, so... To me, that kind of sounds like once the Japanese anti-malware systems have been updated sufficiently, then they'll figure out when they're actually going to release it. I'll keep you updated. Fortunately, there is some good Hathaway's Flash news too. Today, it's been announced that we are getting the Messer FO2 as part of the High Great Universal Century lineup. We've got this promotional picture right here, and we know that we'll be getting the normal F2 for 3,190 yen, and the commander type for 3,300 yen. And that is all we know at the moment, but information, well, but more information should be coming soon. So again, stay tuned. Also some good news for the F90 fans, then we got another one of the mission packs announced, and this time around it's the W type, also known as the Warbird pack. And the cool thing about this particular release is that it's one of those packs that up until now we knew existed, but we didn't know anything about. We didn't know what it did, we didn't know what it looked like, we just had a name, which, well, they decided to interpret in the most literal way. It's called a warbird, so we'll make it transform into a bird with wings and even claws for landing. Someone took inspiration from the wing Gundam, all right. Um, also, I do like how the wings have uh, beam effects on them as well, because, well, that makes it easier to cut up enemies while you're flying around. Anyways, overall, I do feel like it's a much better version of the plunger pack. Granted, that's not really a difficult thing to do, because that's honestly one of the worst looking F1, um, F1, F90s out there, with the exception of the literal space shuttle with legs. But I do genuinely like how this thing looks on the F90. It all looks nicely integrated, and even the color scheme goes quite well with the rest of the F90 as well. If you want one, pre-orders over at P-Ban I started yesterday, and it's currently scheduled for an October release. Keep in mind though, it's only 2,200 yen, $20, because it's only the mission pack we're getting. You have to buy the F90 separately. Then one day later, pre-orders also went live for the Metal Robot Damashi Justice Gundam, which will also be released in October, and of course is going to cost you a little bit more, 14,300 yen, around $140. And even though it's based on the regular Robot Damashi Justice, it does come with a bunch of new parts like the head, the beam sabers, the whole backpack, and of course the joints which now have diecast parts in them, hence the name of the actual line. Then it's also got some very sharp coloring and detail to make sure that it'll look perfect next to your Freedom Gundam. And as a cherry on top, it's also got a really cool custom base to pose it on. Now, I'm not a huge fan of how these proportions look when it's just standing there, but when you put him in an action pose, that thing looks really good. On the same date, then, pre-orders also went live for the Robot Damashi Perfect Gundam 3 Red Warrior version anime. And that is one of the most epic thumbnails I've seen in a while. Those comic style eyes are perfect. And yes, you do get the option to swap them out with more real Gundam eyes. And you can even swap them out for like cute, happy eyes. And if that wasn't enough already, it also comes with a bazooka, Gundam hammer, chest missile launchers, two beam saber blade effect parts, and your choice of one of two antennas. So a pretty neat figure for 7,150 yen, around 70 US, that is currently also slated for an October release. And then while you're at P Bandai, you might also want to have a look at the Bunquete section to get yourself a Tekadon acrylic display to go nicely with your Iron-Blooded Orphans model kits. Or 
action figures, whichever one you want. Reservations opened yesterday as well, and the thing costs you 1,320 yen, like $12, and is releasing in July. Or if Hathaway's Flash is more your thing, you can also get that logo on an acrylic stand. For 3,080 yen, you can get the big one either in clear or in black, and the small one for 1,650 yen, like $15 and $30 for the big one. And the small one is of course also available either in clear or in black. And just at the other acrylic stand, this one is also scheduled for a July release. So maybe you will actually get that stand before the actual movie releases. Who knows? Fear not though, it's not all P Bandai. In September, we've got the FW Gundam Converge Mobile Suit Gundam UC Special Selection. And I gotta say, for a set celebrating the fifth anniversary of the TV broadcast of Gundam Unicorn, they sure made some interesting choices. Of course, we had to get the Unicorn Gundam and the Banshee Norn, both in destroy mode and final battle version. Totally understandable. Next up is the Gym 2 Desert Color. Like, okay, I'm not complaining because I do like the Gym 2, but I gotta admit, when I first saw the thumbnail, I thought it was going to be the Semi Striker and not just, you know, the vanilla Gym 2 in desert colors. Then we're getting the sleeves version of the Gira Doga. I kind of would have expected a Gira Zulu here, but again, I'm not complaining. The Gira Doga is a pretty popular grunt mobile suit, and I absolutely love the added detail they did with the shield. That looks really good. Also, you can have it as just a normal grunt mobile suit or as a commander because we are getting a commander antenna as well. And then finally, we've got the sleeves version of the Galgook and the Zagog. Sure. All of them, of course, come with a piece of chewing gum and the figures will set you back 550 yen a piece or 5,500 yen, $50 for the whole set of 10. Which will hopefully contain three of those Unicorn Gundams so that you can replicate the special feature of this set. The Triple Shield Combo. I've seen worse deals. And if you're interested in the set, I will have a link down below so you can go ahead and pre-order it. On to the stuff we could get this week then. Yesterday we got the High Grade After Colony Death Scythe for 1650 yen, $15, meaning that we almost half all five of the original Gundams. But now the question is, is the next wing kit going to be the Shenlong Gundam or is it going to be another grunt mobile suit first? Because personally, I wouldn't mind getting the Taurus or the Virgo first. Anyways, um, at the moment, I'm of course very much looking forward to getting my Death Scythe because those promotional images are looking really good. Just look at that knee. It's got better armor separation than the Master Grade Jin had. Time to move on to the other releases then. Yesterday, reservations started for the Gundam Global Challenge official making book. And the article promises us that this will be a very luxurious hardcover release. And for 8,800 yen, like $85 or something, I really do hope that it is a very nice book. It'll have a lot of information about the whole challenge, including never seen before stuff like an interview with Yoshioki Tomino, of course, all in Japanese, pictures, gravure, and more. You had me at gravure. Moving on to this week's apparel then, Cospa is all over the board this week. On the one hand, we've got this very nice looking polo shirt with the Zionic logo on it. It'll set you back 4,180 yen and is available in black and British green, which up until now I didn't actually know was a real color. Like when I saw British green, I thought it was a reference to Operation British and then, you know, they just made a joke about it. But no, actual color for um, racing teams. Cool. But anyways, um, then on the other hand, we have this. Makuve underwear. 
with his famous line on it, Are wa ii mono da. Which translates to, that's a good thing. Like what, are they referring to the boxers or the thing that's supposed to be inside of the boxers? <sighs> I guess you can now literally make Makuve kiss your ass. Thanks. I hate it. So quickly moving on to Strig G, they've got a collaboration with Force A Better. And the focus of the line is using a material known as Cordura, I think that's how you pronounce it, which is supposedly both lightweight and durable and used much in military and outdoors clothing, which immediately explains why I've never heard about it. We've got four types of normal t-shirts for $4,950 and each, around $45. There's an Earth Federation Space Forces design in either white or navy, and a Xeon design in white or black. And for $550 and extra, you can get those same designs on a t-shirt with a pocket. Nice. All of them will go on sale on the 22nd, Japan time, which should be around the time that this video goes live, although online sales are already ongoing. Which also goes for the newest Strict G New York Landscape Collection, a collection featuring famous locations of the One Year War on a t-shirt or a hoodie. For 7,480 yen, you can get a black t-shirt with a pocket and either an Odessa or a Jobro design. And for 8,580 yen, there is a long black sleeve t-shirt with an Abawaku design on it. Now, this does sound a bit expensive after the whole marketing talk we had about those Cordura t-shirts. Anyways, for 16,280 yen, or like $150, you can get a Site 7 design on a hoodie. And then finally, we're wrapping up this week's Gundam news with some Gundam Cafe news. Next week, they'll be kicking off the Gundam Cafe costume collection for Spring 2021, with Kira, Atherin, Kigali, and Lacus acting as the models. And by now, you should all know how this goes. Every one of the characters gets his or her signature dish and a special drink, and just as in the actual anime, I find myself agreeing the most with Kigali's food choices. A bacon and egg hamburger. Yes, please. Now, I am a bit disappointed that they didn't also include chili sauce with that hamburger, but so be it. And of course, each of the menu items will also give you a special random coaster. And of course, no special event is complete without a bunch of extra merchandise to buy, you know, to celebrate the occasion. There's a mug, acrylic figures, I think I'd like the Lacus one, magnet badges, muddlers, again, I'll go for the Lacus one, and a smartphone stand featuring the whole cast. It's the whole shebang we've gotten used to, but I think we can all agree that the obvious highlight of this entire promotion is Lacus's outfit. And I think that that is the perfect way to end this episode of Gundam News. As always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters. I hope everyone watching has a great day, and I'll see you all next week with more Gundam News.